Hello and welcome. In our last episode, we covered the need to include the types of numbers that make up our inequality solutions. These numbers have slowly been introduced to you in stages that match your ability to comprehend the growing complexity they express. This mirrors the way numbers have become part of our civilization. When early humans started counting, it was likely discrete things, as you did as a child with natural numbers. The need for zero things, or negative numbers, would have been strange indeed, as it likely was for you at first. With advancements in science and the requirement for accurate measurements, continuous data and rational numbers were needed. So once again, we see our number system evolving as needed to handle the growing complexity of our world. By adding solid circles to our graphs for discrete data, or stating the types of numbers using set notation, we can more clearly define the numbers we wish to include in our solutions. In this segment, we'll introduce how we can show linear inequality solutions on a graph. We'll do a quick review of linear equalities first. When our equations have two variables, we arrange the terms into standard slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. By formatting them this way, we get good at recognizing and evaluating the graphs for slope, intercepts, and direction. Starting with the most basic equation, y equals x, we get a line that crosses through the point zero zero and rises up and runs to the right in equal steps. As the coefficient m becomes greater than 1, the slope steepens until it becomes the vertical line x equals 0. When m is smaller than 1, the slope decreases until it becomes the horizontal line y is equal to 0. For negative values of m, the line flips to the opposite direction, rising up and running to the left, but the slope pattern would be repeated. Finally, as the constant term b becomes greater than 0, the y-intercept goes up, matching the value of b, or down as b becomes less than 0. Here's a simple linear equation example, y equals 2x plus 2. By inputting values of x into the equation, we get corresponding y values we can summarize into a table. When we plot the corresponding points on a graph, 1, 4, 2, 6, etc., we see our solution generates a straight line, where all the points on the line make the equation true. When x is 0, y must equal b, which is 2 in our example. Shown on the graph is a point where the line passes through the y-intercept. And when y is 0, we can solve for the x-intercept we get negative 1 on our graph. A positive 2m tells us our line's slope rises up and to the right two times faster than it runs. Now, let's extend our understanding of linear equations to linear inequalities. Let's trade the equal sign for a greater than sign and continue using our example to show how to graph a linear inequality solution. First, make sure the inequality statement is in standard form, as our example is. Make it an equality statement to establish the boundary line. If the inequality includes equal to, we use a solid line to show that it's part of the solution. Our example does not include equal to, so a dashed line is used to show that it's not part of the solution. Use the direction of the inequality sign to tell you whether the solution lies above or below the line. Our example is greater than, so we shade above the line to show that all these points are part of the solution. As we've been doing with previous inequality solutions, test some values to confirm your answer. Try any point in the shaded area of the solution, say negative 2, 0 and substitute the respective values. We get 0 is greater than negative 2, which is true, so we can confirm that it's part of the solution. Try one outside the solution, for example the point 0, 0. Now we get 0 is greater than 2, 
which is false as we'd expect, given that it's not part of the solution. Here's another example. 2y plus 4x is less than or equal to 8. First, we need to put the linear inequality into standard form. Subtract 4x from both sides, and divide all terms by 2. We get the linear inequality that really means two things. y is equal to negative 2x plus 4, or y is less than negative 2x plus 4. To establish our boundary line, view it as an equation. We could make a table of values, or use our understanding of intercepts to give us two critical points on the graph. When x is 0, y must equal 4. And when y is 0, x is positive 2. Through these two points, we place a solid line indicating that all points on the line are part of the solution. And we shade below the line as our inequality is less than or equal to. As we've learned in previous episodes, inequalities cover a wide range of possibilities. With two variable linear inequalities, our solutions go beyond an interval on a line. Now they extend in two dimensions, and we need to show this effectively on a graph. We put our inequality statements into standard slope intercept form. Then, make them equal to establish a boundary line. If the inequality symbol includes equal to, the line is solid, indicating that those values are part of the solution. Without an equal sign, a dashed line indicates the line is not part of the solution. Check the direction of the sign. Greater than means to shade above, and less than means to shade below. So now we can graph our four possible inequalities. Greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. We'll take this one step further in our next section, applying what we've learned to solve systems of inequalities.